YouTube was it going the goat house is back on NFL schedule release day we had the whole week one schedule leaked and then confirmed by the NFL so in this video I wanted to go game by game kind of break down uh, all those week one games what time slot day that they're in in a second we'll actually go over some other leaks that were not confirmed but we're pretty damn confident on them a few full schedules uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving, those games, but mainly the focus is on these week one games. Anyone familiar with our week one or our weekly pickums? Uh, this might get you excited for that because I use kind of the same graphic style. It's getting me excited. Follow our Twitter for these leaks, more information on these schedules, um, and then to keep you guys, we're keeping you guys involved on the Twitter as well. Polls, including you in videos, uh, updates on anything NFL wise. So check it out. Subscribe to the channel. Full NFL coverage here at the Goat House. Much appreciated if you like and subscribe. Uh, yeah, here's our Twitter. You know, you see the Thanksgiving games here that were that were leaked and were can't 100% confirm, but you know, uh, I, they're, they're, that, that's what it's gonna be. It's what it's gonna be here. So Bears, Lions, Raiders, Cowboys, Bills, Saints. Go to our Twitter for more uh, information on these things. There's the Saints, the Jets, and the Patriots full schedule. I don't know if I should be showing those because it says confidential on there. So if you want to see those. Go to our Twitter. You can get the full picture and see the schedule. They look legit. Um, and then we got two Christmas games. Browns at Packers, uh, which should be a great one. Hopefully Aaron Rodgers is playing. And Colts at Cardinals. Definitely a random one, but definitely a good game there. Excited that, you know, thinking outside the box here. And we got two games on Christmas here, so that's that's awesome. So if you want to see more on those things, uh, go to our Twitter. I'm here to break down the week one schedule that was confirmed by the NFL. Thursday night football game. Is the Cowboys at the Buccaneers, defending Super Bowl champs, of course, home on the first game of the NFL season. Cowboys. Uh, Cowboys, I predicted to be, pre, be pretty damn good, as well as the Buccaneers last year. The Cowboys was unfortunate because they pretty much started the year depleted. Basically, their tackles were out, and Dak Prescott got hurt pretty early on. Now, hopefully, hopefully we see a fresh Cowboys team taking on the defending Super Bowl champions. And this could be a damn, damn good game. You know, the Cowboys, especially week one, where we expect them healthy, hopefully Dak's good to go. It's a dangerous team. That is one of the best offenses in football. The defense is improving. The Buccaneers definitely got the better defense. The Buccaneers still might be the most complete team in football, reason why they won the Super Bowl last year. Um, but the Cowboys offense could, especially a healthy offense, could score on the Buccaneers defense. And then, even though it's a great defense, Maybe they forced the Buccaneers to play keep up with them, you know. So that could be a very, very good game here, um, and it's it's definitely going to be interesting. It's a great first game. I love that one on Thursday night. Uh, looking at the early window games on Sunday, so the early afternoon games. We got Eagles and Falcons. Remember they started the year off first game of the year uh, a few years back. Obviously, uh, you know, fresh off the Eagles Super Bowl, they met each other in the playoffs previously, and then it was the first game of the year then. Um, so they're going to be playing each other on Sunday. And, um, yeah, definitely a different Eagles team since then. Now the Falcons team might be a little different too because you bring in the new coaching staff. You had Kyle Pitts in the mix, Dean Pease coaching the defense. So I'm excited about this Falcons team. You know, remember last year when the full schedule came out, um, you know, I was calling the Falcons schedule the hardest. I never go off strength to schedule because that just kind of goes off of team's record the previous year. Teams won't have the same record. So um, I kind of make my own strength to schedule and I think it ends up being accurate, too. Um, and I had the Falcons at the hardest schedule last year. So should be a little, e hopefully a little easier this year for their sake. Um, new, Somewhat of a new look Falcons team. And they'll be explosive. Eagles still putting things together, new coaching staff. So we'll see what happens week one. Uh, but week one is uh, usually pretty random there. Steelers and Bills, we saw them towards the back end uh, later last season. It was a primetime game, kind of hyped up a bit. Steelers were missing some guys. So now you would think full strength week one, of course, maybe a revenge game for the Steelers, you know, because the Bills, that game was pretty close for about a half and the Bills really pulled away there. Um, but yeah, excited about the Bills. We'll see if Josh Allen could even take that another step. We'll see if the Bills pass rush did actually improve. It may take some weeks into the season, uh, but yeah, really excited about that game. We'll see if the Steelers uh, start off hot like they did last year against a little different look you know offensive lines really not the same lost some guys on defense but uh, they, they could start off strong like they normally do there um, and it'll be in Buffalo of course that's a Sunday early game so really excited about that one really excited about this one actually it's not it doesn't at first glance doesn't look like 
one of the big games, but I always pick up some random games here. Jets at Panthers, really excited about this one early on Sunday in week one. Uh, Sam Darnold versus Zach Wilson, so Sam Darnold going against his former team, maybe a revenge game for him. Panthers got a pretty damn good roster. You know, the, what I question is the quarterback. You know, Sam Darnold hasn't shown me it nearly enough yet, but he can get there. Uh, perhaps will it be right away in week one? Maybe you just don't know what to expect from this new, you know, Sam Darnold Panthers offense. Maybe it's tough to game plan, even for the Jets who are familiar with him. Um, you know, but I do like the roster of the Jets with Zach Wilson. Really excited to watch him. A couple young studs across that offense and defense. That's going to be a really good game. That's going to be a really good game. Random Jets Panthers, but I'm looking forward to that one very much. There's another, there's a couple of random ones I really like. Um, Vikings Bengals, Mike Zimmer playing his old team. He coached for a long time there. Uh, and then we see kind of an LSU battle. We got Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson on the other side. So those two receivers that were Joe Burrow's guys. So that's pretty interesting there. Um, the Bengals, uh, actually, it's interesting because both these teams, you kind of question the offensive line. You know, both these teams could actually be very good offense. I've seen the Vikings finish fifth in offense last year. The Bengals had those high powered moments, you know, air, air pass, you know, air attack, you know, um, you know, and you think if they get Joe Mixon going, it could be a sneaky offense, but it all comes down both these teams on the offensive line, maybe the two worst offensive lines from last year. And they are both lo looking a little different. Actually, Riley Reef is going to, who is the Vikings left tackle going to play right, uh, right tackle for the Bengals. So a lot of interesting things here. Um, it's almost expected the Vikings get their defense back on track. Uh, you know, for that Zimmer type defense, but will it take time? Because remember, you know, it's going to be about the second half of last season. There's going to be about two returning starters uh, for the Vikings, which is kind of the good thing because it was a bad defense last year. But will it take time to kind of get going? Will it take time for the Bengals, young team, offensive line to get going? It should be a pretty good game, actually, I think, uh, in Cincinnati. Bengals could be pretty sneaky this year. Uh, next, we got uh, another early window Sunday game. It's 49ers at Lions. Another interesting one. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of things linking these games together because the 49ers are very familiar with playing Jared Goff, who was on the Rams. You know, I felt like the 49ers handled them pretty well uh, in in the past. You know, Jared Goff. That is, they played them pretty tough with that defense. Another thing to keep in mind: 49ers. We think have a you know maybe the one of the best, maybe the best defenses in football if at full strength. Big if, but we think. Week one, it should be full strength, fully healthy. So uh, they're going to be giving Goff a battle. Goff's looking like he's got a pretty damn good offensive line for him. The Lions got some young talent, but will they get going right off the bat? That is the question. I guess a big storyline is who is going to be starting for the San Francisco 49ers. Is it Trey Lance? Is it Jimmy Garoppolo? It's going to be interesting to see, but um, yeah, Goff versus the Niners. You usually see him twice a year. He's going to see him week one here, uh, even if he's out of the division. Uh, another early game, Jags at Texans, uh, division game here, pretty random, but I guess not really, see, see some division games here, uh, but we see, I mean, everyone's going to be excited about this, even though Jags, Texans doesn't feel like a big game, it's excited to see Trevor Lawrence, Urban Meyer's team here, uh, Travis Etienne, you know, the gr good group of young guys, and then I guess the storyline is, is Deshaun Watson going to play, if he's not, is it going to be uh, Tyrod Taylor, is it going to be Davis Mills, probably Taylor, uh, you know, the Jags, Jags last year, totally different team, but last year started off 1-0 and with a surprising win over the Colts and then just blew it the rest of the year, but it ended up working out for the better there. But what we'll, we'll see this year, really you can't compare last year and this year, especially with the Jags, totally different team. But uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. You know, it's going to be fun seeing that young team right off the bat, especially Trevor Lawrence there. So divisional game to start, must win really, even though week one doesn't really give you an idea at all. Uh, how the rest of the season will play out, but it, you know, division game, gotta win it. Uh, another early win, early window game. I think a pretty random one here. Seahawks Colts. Um, is there much link in these teams like the other ones? Not really, but I think a pretty damn good game. Um, you know, n last year has nothing to do with this year, but I'm sure people will talk about it. Seahawks defense started off just awful last year and really improved. Where will they be at now? Colts surprisingly lost to the Jacks last year. It really meant nothing, even though people blew it up. Um, so how will they start off this year? Uh, Colts defense was a very good defense last year. Will it continue on that path? I like to add Quiddy Pay. Uh, how yeah, I guess the storyline is Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz versus Russell Wilson. Some two quarterbacks that took too many damn sacks last year. So how will they be against the opposing defenses? So that's kind of the storyline. So yeah, it'll be pretty fun to see Carson Wentz week one versus Seattle Seahawks here. Um, yeah, 
That's just a random matchup, but I love it. Car another one, another AFC South team and an NFC West team here. I think a pretty random matchup. Um, interesting, though, because remember the Titans played the Ravens in the playoffs last year, and you know their mission was to hold Lamar Jackson in check while the Titans' defense was struggling all year, and they actually kind of did that. There was a big run that wasn't necessarily a dagger, but it felt like, okay, the Ravens are probably going to win that Lamar Jackson broke. But really, that was the only big one there. Uh, for Other than that, Titans held him in check. Now they got to deal with Kyler Murray, so kind of back-to-back -back games, uh, you know, going against the scrambling, running quarterbacks here. So that, that's pretty interesting. Uh, and where's the Titans' defense at? Where, where's it at? Look like they improved on paper. Uh, looks like the Cardinals improved on paper in general, um, you know, so... That'd be a pretty good game. You know, I don't really see any matchup that sides towards one team. It's just a, it's just a very interesting game. Titans are going to run the ball first. The Cardinals are going to pass the ball first. Um, you know, different look defenses. You know, Titans adding Bud Dupree, uh, Danico Autry, drafting Caleb Farley. You know, the Cardinals draft Zayvon Collins. He's going to start, it sounds like. And uh, they add J.J. Watt. They get Chandler Jones back. They got Malcolm Butler, who played for the Titans. Just remember that. So some interesting things there. Should be a fun one for sure. Uh, next, another early afternoon Sunday game. Another kind of a random one here. Chargers at Washington football team. Justin Herbert, we'll see how he is in the second year here. It was surprisingly excellent last year. That might be an understatement how good he was last year. Uh, now he goes, maybe, maybe most of the world projects the Washington football team as the best defense in football. So that's going to be fun. What I would like to see with the Chargers offense, I think they're going to really spread defenses out. I think they're going to be, because Herbert is deep ball guy. They got some of those deep ball receivers. Uh, they're going to make even good defenses worry about the deep ball that's going to open up underneath for Austin Eckler, those running backs, even Keenan Allen, guys like that. Um, so will that in week one where it's tough to game plan for teams, will that throw off even a great defense? You know, great defenses really don't show up in week one. If Washington could do that, that'd be fantastic. Um, really excited about Washington, too. We'll see who's starting at quarterback. They're going to be Ryan Fitzpatrick. Um, but Gibson, love that offense. They actually added receivers with Terry McLaurin, so really excited about that. It's going to be a tough game plan for both these defenses. You really, Washington's got a not, lot of new-look guys. They were kind of new last year, it felt like. Chargers defense is fairly new, so they're going to have to adjust, try to game plan for this Washington offense. And the same thing because Washington has a great defense, but will the Chargers make them play back? But their front could also do some damage. Chargers offense line improved this offseason, but can it handle that Washington front? That's going to be a good game for multiple mismatch reasons on both sides there. Uh, now we get into the late afternoon games, and this one... Great one here. Uh, rematch from a playoff game. Browns, she's going to end up being a very good playoff game. And the Browns, you only everyone, I think, believes that they are just going to continue to get better. You know, they got to be better right now than they were just the last time we've seen them. That's what everyone assumes there. And I'm, I'm kind of on board with that. Um, really improved the secondary as well. But even without improving the roster, young guys, new coach last year, you know, sometimes – New coaches kind of get figured out second year, but I don't really get that feeling. You know, it just feels like they're just going to continue to get better. And the Chiefs uh, revamped that offense line in a, in a good way, um, you know, and um, I think the defense can continue to get better there, some young guys there. So the scary thing is Mahomes actually can get better as well. I mean, that goes without saying. This is going to be a fantastic ball game to start off the late afternoon in week one here. Uh, and then we got another great one, Dolphins-Patriots. Could this be... The old Alabama quarterback showdown, Tua Tungavailoa and Mac Jones, thinking Mac Jones could start. We see these two teams play to start last year. Cam Newton on the ground was actually a little bit of a problem for the Dolphins, but I don't think it would be this time if Cam Newton started, but they could start Mac Jones, rotate Cam Newton in, run the ball, kind of keep the Dolphins on their toes. we got to cover the pass when Mac Jones is in. You're kind of going to adjust and get a defensive play call in on the fly. <clears throat> Pretty tough, tough game plan. But the Dolphins are almost kind of a new look team too. You know, I don't think it's the same. You know, even when we saw Tua, I just don't think. Even I'm not talking about the players either. I think the play calls. I think uh, just the whole system in general, type of offense, going to be a different. It's a different Tua team here. So you can't really at all base things off last year. And you add Will Fuller, you add Jalen Waddle. That could be a scary team. You add Jalen Phillips on defense. Uh, Patriots looking like maybe the best offensive line in of football, so it'll be a good battle going, you know, Brian Flores for, for uh, his, his former team in the Patriots there. So 
a lot of storylines on this one. Definitely one of the one of the best games that I can't wait for. Um, I'm hoping Cam, uh, excuse me, Mac Jones starts, and they kind of yeah use Cam here and there running. That that's kind of what I'm hoping for for the Patriots' sake, uh, and for this game, the Bama the Bama battle. Really excited about that. Uh, Packers Saints. Hopefully, we see Aaron Rodgers, so we can see a great game here. Could we be seeing a Jordan Love versus Jameis Winston? Will we even see Jameis Winston in Week One? I think so. Could be Taysom Hill. Don't think it'll be Ian Book. Never know. Uh, but I, I'm kind of banking on Aaron Rodgers and Jameis Winston. New look Saints team. Maybe more of a high powered passing attack there from the Saints with Jameis Winston because he likes to air the ball downfield. Um, but they do want to limit his turnovers. So I think the game could actually start. You know, opening up the pass by pounding the football, getting the ball in the flat to Alvin Kamara. Packers could do the same thing with their their running back group there. Uh, yeah, this should be a pretty good game. This should be a pretty good. I think they're it's pretty even. We saw them in prime time last year. I know we expect the Packers to be better. The Saints lost a lot of you know lost a lot of players, but yeah, it might be a tough game plan. New kind of a new look Saints team just by their quarterback change. Uh, and we'll see the whole Aaron Rodgers situation, how that ends up being. I'm kind of banking on Rodgers versus Jameis Winston here. We will see. Uh, but I actually like this one. This actually seems like a random, very random game. Maybe not the one that highlights. It's definitely not the one that highlights. You know, this, we cut we, I mean, the Browns, Chiefs, you know, games like that are the obvious ones. But I actually really like this game. Why? Because these are two very good rosters. Very good roster. If we're just talking about roster, don't. You know, don't have the quarterback decide more than the rest of the roster. These are very, very good rosters. Very, uh, I guess you could compare them in a way. But then the problem, and I guess the question is, will the quarterbacks play up to where the roster is? That is the question for both these teams, whether it's Drew Locke, Teddy Bridgewater, uh, and then if it's Daniel Jones over there and if his offensive line could protect him. And the Broncos, I like their offensive line, but a question there at right tackle, I suppose, for now. Uh, but, yeah, very good. The, the rosters, you know, outside the quarterback say more than playoff team, really. M maybe maybe Super Bowl rosters, but they, they're kind of getting held back from that because of the quarterback position. So I think a pretty even battle. Um, very, very complete team uh, teams here. I think the Broncos are a little more complete. We'll see who's at quarterback here. You know, do you go the safe route? Do you go Teddy Bridgewater? Who could just be a game manager because that's all we need you to be in a game like this because uh, we're going to play great defense against Daniel Jones, try to create, be confident they can create some turnovers. We see Teddy to take care of the football. We're going to pound the football down the field. Or do you go Drew Locke? Drew Locke can hit that big play, but he also can turn the ball over a bit like Daniel Jones. You know, I can argue both sides. In the way I just explained it, Teddy Bridgewater makes a little more sense because I think you can win with defense as long as you take care of the ball. You know, I think they are thinking that maybe. Uh, but then, you know, Drew Locke still has upside, you know, some upside. You know, is, is he going to be, become this great quarterback? You know, pr probably not. Quarterbacks don't change a whole bunch. Uh, the past has shown. But, you know, you get him going, you get him those reps. I think benching him before the year starts and then throwing him back in doesn't really sound right so it's a tough decision you kind of can argue both sides there Giants this is it for Daniel Jones you know that that roster is looking pretty good that receiver receivers are stacked receivers are stacked on both sides they got a good running it's a good game running good running attacks good receivers oh that's gonna be a fun one it's kind of a random fun one here uh Sunday night the Chicago Bears at the LA Rams I feel like this is a prime time game every year it almost it almost feels like I'll have to check that, make sure I'm right. But it almost feels like it's in LA a lot too. Um, the Bears at Rams usually a very, very good. It's weird because this is usually a very dominant defensive battle every time they play. Maybe a little different this year. Maybe a little different. You know, the Bears defense might not be as good as it's been in the past. That's usually how defenses go. But I still think good. Rams defense I thought was the best in football last year, but they lost some pieces including their defensive coordinator, Brandon Staley, who was actually with the Bears at one point, but he's now with the Chargers head coaching, obviously. So the Rams defense could take a hit. There's some young guys that they could step up, Terrell Lewis, guys like that. So, and I think they're actually solid at safety, young, some young studs, even though they lost Josh Johnson, but John Johnson, excuse me. Um, but yeah, so it still could be a defensive battle, but now you add Matthew Stafford, who is actually familiar with playing the Bears twice a year you know so Matthew Stafford and maybe a high powered offense and the big question who do the Bears start at quarterback something Dalton they don't want to rush Justin Fields in but then something 
Justin Fields is too damn talented. You know, you traded up to where you got him to, to, to get him, to start him. Uh, and he has the ability to make you a, more of a high-powered offense and compete with a team like the Rams here. But do you want to put a rookie quarterback against maybe the best defense in football, one of them, Aaron Donald? You know, that's a, it's a big question on Sunday night prime time. If, what, imagine if Justin Fields played in this game and he won the game. You know, he played well. Man, that'd be pretty comf comforting there for Chicago. Uh, that'd be big, a big statement. Give him the confidence. He already has the confidence, but that'd be big. But then you look at it, yeah, what if you threw him in there Sunday night against the Rams defense, Aaron Donald and company, and he struggled a little bit. I don't think it would really affect him that much, but I think people would be talking like that, you know, so interesting decision there. Again, the storyline might be that. It could be Stafford playing the Bears, which we've seen so many times in the past. That's going to be a fun... You know, I think a big storyline is this is always a defensive game, and it might not be. It might be a little bit of both, you know. Uh, if it's Fields versus Stafford, it might be a high-powered offensive game here. You know, the Rams trying to adjust with a little bit of a different defense. It might not be the same defense that ended the year last year. So, really excited about that one. Pretty random Monday night game to end week one, but I like it. Ravens at Raiders. <clears throat> you know, Raiders had quite a few primetime games last year at home to show off that Las Vegas, new Las Vegas stadium. And they're starting off year one on the same on the same path there. Uh, we we'll see more of that stadium, you know, in in Las Vegas, week one, taking on Lamar Jackson and company. Raiders defense seems to be revamped. Uh, people kind of look at the players and, and realize that, and that's true. I think it's more of the scheme. I think guys like the you know guys like Trayvon Mullen and Damon Arnett, if Arnett plays, probably be Casey Hayward starting. But I think those guys could be better, not because they're young and developing, because the whole scheme changed. Gus Bradley's defense, cover three defense here, um, and they got a lot of pieces to kind of fit that. They're definitely more talented. Will they be able to adjust week one? You know, a lot of changes there, new scheme. Will they be able to adjust week one, especially going against the Lamar Jackson and that offense? Can't wait to see how Rashad Bateman works out in that that offense so maybe it'll be tough for the Raiders to kind of adjust offensively Yannick Ngakwe maybe a revenge game hey you traded for me you let me go he's gonna play hard obviously for, for that those reasons and I mean because that's how he plays but um yeah so I think most people will kind of be on the Ravens for those reasons I explained most people might view them as a pretty good team Raiders started off very good last year and they were looking like a legit team they kind of blew it second half of the year so is and that kind of seems to be the storyline for Derek Carr uh, throughout his career, especially the last couple of years, he looks like easily looks like a top ten quarterback. You know, first half of the season every year. I think I talk about it every year. He looks like a top ten quarterback easily, without a question. And then nowhere near it really. Second half of the year, not that he's bad, but just not at that level. He's not at all bad second half of the year, but just not at that top 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 level. So maybe the Raiders started off great again. Maybe that's just what what they you know Derek Carr and company does. You know, maybe maybe they. You know, I guess the good thing is for the Raiders, even though there's some adjustments on defense, you got to get ready by week one. You haven't from now all the way until week one to come up with a game plan to stop Lamar, slow Lamar Jackson down, make him pass. I'm a believer in Lamar Jackson's passing game. I'm not one of those people that, you know, say says he can't pass. I'm not at all one of those people. But you know what the game plan got to be. So you have all this time to kind of defend that game plan for that. Maybe that works in your favor. Maybe you want to play the Ravens week one. You know, just stop that, make them pass, and we'll take care of business on offense. You know, do they have the offensive line to pick up the blitz of the Ravens? They, they certainly could. It's a little bit different, but I still like their offensive line. Um, excited. Excited about all these games. Again, we got more leaks, pictures of full schedules on our Twitter at Godell's NFL. There's a link pinned in the comments for that. You can find it in the description as well. Uh, and we'll be talking more, more and more as they come out, uh, maybe starting tomorrow, because tonight all the full schedules are confirmed. So starting tomorrow, next couple days, uh, we'll talk about my favorite games maybe of the year, the best games, maybe sneaky good games like the ones we talked about in this video. And then, you know, uh, things along those lines, you know, and then we'll get into our record prediction season predictions in the very near future. So really excited about this time of the year, you know, sad the draft's gone, but now we get into what it's all about here. So really excited. We got the full coverage here at the goat house. Smash that like button, subscribe, turn notifications on, make sure you follow that Twitter. That is going to do it for this one. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.